So welcome once again in the class of basic civil engineering. So in last lecture or in last unit we have seen the role of engineer, the branches of civil engineering, and different materials. So in this unit, in second unit, we are going to see the building components, the uh, study of plans and the planning of the building. So starting with the building components, first of all, I would like to express my thanks to uh, my colleague Mr. M. H. Mota for uh, helping me uh, with this presentation. So to begin, uh, now we'll begin to the lecture. I'm Mr. S. S. Ogle, Assistant Professor, Civil Engineering Department. So, uh, as you can see, uh, there are uh, you you some uh, most of the times you observe so many civil engineering structures, uh, and particularly in case of buildings, we, uh, these are divided into two types of structure. That is load bearing structure and the frame structure. So, what is the difference between load bearing structure and the frame structure? So, as you can see, our old buildings like uh, we have the old wadas or the forts, the load has been transferred to the foundation. Uh, basically, the mechanism of, of the building or uh, how the building works. So, if, suppose you, if you are standing on the floor, so the load from the floor has been transferred to the beam or the uh, supports uh, at the supports of the floor and then it is transferred to the rather column or the walls and then to the foundation so in load bearing structure or as you can see in old structures the load has been transferred by the walls through the uh, to the foundation and from the foundation to the soil so in load bearing structures which are the old type of structures uh, still uh, sometimes we use the load bearing structure for the temporary works or the small buildings the load bearing structures has been used so in load bearing structure the load has been transferred to the soil or to the foundation through the walls and in frame structure we have the frame like this this is a kind of frame here we have the frame so through the frame that is from this wall is coming on this particular truss like structure and it is transferred to the column and then to the foundation so in frame structure, the load is transferred from slab to the beams and then beams to the columns and from the column to the foundation and then to the soil. So basically whole idea of structures is transferring all the load towards the uh, foundation and then to uh, finally to the soil. So uh, this way this structure is uh, working. So this is the basic difference between load bearing structure and the frame structure. So in load bearing structure we have the old kind of buildings uh, in which the width of walls uh, is quite more to carry that heavy load and in frame structure we have the column that uh, actually uh, the modern structures uh, in which the wall size is less uh, because they are uh, we are using those all as a partition only they are not playing role in the load bearing or transferring the load load has been transferred by the columns only uh, column and beam structure only so uh, this is the advantage that we can make uh, changes in the frame structure uh, while by removing the walls in load bearing structure it is not possible to remove the walls because we have the load on it but in frame structure it is possible and we have the flexibility even in the load bearing structure we have to provide a uh, more width of the wall uh, because if you uh, observe any castles or any forts they, we have the large size of walls because they have the high uh, or the height of the wall is more so we need to provide a high or the great size of uh, size means width of the wall but in case of frame structure uh, the only column uh, sizes has been uh, 
increased or decreased as per the requirement so it is very much possible or uh, frame structure of the flexibility <coughs> that we can build the high rise structure by using those these frame structure that's why this frame structure has been preferred uh, in modern days so basically rcc structures and the steel structures are uh, the frame structures here you can see the major building parts so major means it is basically divided into the three parts basically rather the two parts here above the plinth level this is plinth level it is called as a superstructure and below that it is called as a substructure and substructure again <coughs> it is there it shows the foundation so it is substructure and this is the superstructure here also you can see this is above this plinth level it is sub superstructure and below that it is the substructure so what are the levels in building basically they uh, there are so many levels in the building so basically uh, on which we are standing that is floor it is called as a floor level which is somewhere over here this is called as a floor level this is where the ground is there it is called as a ground level then below the window the seal is present which is called as then seal level and i will show you with the pen here so this is the seal level and this is lintel has been placed over here so it is called as a lintel level so this is the ground level this is the floor level this is seal level and this is lintel level and above all at the bottom that is called as a uh, story height or the slab level so here you can see the plinth level height so these are the different levels in the building now what are the components of the structure so the structure or the building has been divided into various parts the first is the we will start with the bottom that is foundation which is important then above that plinth is there then to fill that plinth the plinth filling is there we have to fill that plinth and then we can uh, pour the slab of the uh, ground floor or ground level then walls are there then above this plinth filling we have the dpc that is damp proof course which is basically provide the protection from the dampness or uh, the capillary action of the water coming through the or coming from the ground so this provide a protection then floor is there then we have the beams columns then as we have seen the lintels then stairs are there for the vertical transportation then parapet is there parapet is basically the uh, one meter height wall which is for the protection on the terrace then roof is there which is at top and finally the door or door and windows for the uh, convenience uh, of the or the uh, protection uh, and uh, it provides a way from uh, in and out way in the building so these are the components of the structure mainly building is divided into these main parts now the foundation so here you can see the different types of foundations so the foundation is a structural unit that uniformly distributes the load from the superstructure to underlying soil this is the first structural unit to be constructed for any building construction a good foundation prevents a settlement of the building it also prevents the lateral movement of the structure so here you can see this is the first part 
of the building which we are going to construct this is a box type of uh, or the isolated foundation then here you can see this is a foundation which is connected which is again the mat like foundation so there are different types of foundation so main purpose of the foundation is to distribute the load uniformly from the superstructure that is coming from this it is going to distribute it it is same like our legs our legs have more area uh, and they used to uh, or they tend to uh, distribute our whole body weight on the ground neatly or evenly and even the foundation prevents a settlement of the building so uh, they do not allow building to settle in the ground and also prevent the lateral movement lateral movement means movement in this direction this or either you can see movement in this direction either here or here so it does not allow movement in those directions so that is basically the function of the foundation now types of foundation so basically foundation has been divided into uh, two types that is shallow foundation and deep foundation so the shallow foundation there are different types of wall footings and various column footings as you can see over here these are the shallow foundations basically the depth of these foundations is not more those are called as a shallow foundation and the deep foundation those are the pile foundation where the uh, foundation has been uh, provided up to too much depth because we don't have the bearing capacity at the top surface of the soil so we have to go into the deeper uh, side to have the uh, good bearing capacity to hold the building so these are the pile foundations now the plinth the plinth is constructed above the ground level dividing line between substructure and superstructure this is important this is the dividing line between substructure and superstructure the lowest part of superstructure above ground level hmm? so this is 30 to 75 centimeter in height depending upon the locality and soil type so uh, suppose we have uh, the water laying area or water is coming into uh, every year water is uh, coming into the or we have the uh, flood prone area so we have to provide the more height of the plinth so that water will not come into the house and uh, so many types are there so dpc is provided at plinth level to prevent the moisture from rising the walls of the ground floor as i have told you earlier dpc has been provided over there then plinth filling is used to fill the space between ground level and superstructure so here you can see this filling is there this filling is there and it is for the space fill the space between ground level and the superstructure this is a damp proof course so basically uh, the dpc is the layer of waterproofing material applied on the plinth level to prevent the rise of surface water into the walls the walls are constructed over the dpc so here you can see this is the layer of dpc which is of waterproofing material even here also you can see this is the layer of dpc and which has been used for the prevent to rise the surface water into the walls next is the walls walls are the vertical elements it can be made up of stones bricks concrete blocks etc walls provide the an enclosure and protect against wind sunshine rain etc the openings are provided in the walls for ventilation and access to the building as i told you earlier so actually uh, walls provide an enclosure and protect against the wind that is the one function 
and in case of load bearing structures also these walls are playing the role uh, role of uh, the load bearing also or the load bearing components so there they they are going to play the important role next is the floors the floor is the surface laid on the plinth level and at various elevation in case of multi story building it also help to divide the space vertically as here you can see these are the floors the first second third fourth and the roof so these are the different floors and these are helping to divide the space vertically as you can see here uh, this vertical space or floors so we are keeping the material or the uh, different things or we are living on this particular floors so basically the these floors has been made up of the slabs or in case of old buildings uh, they use the different techniques like sometimes wooden logs has been used to create a floor area and even in some temporary buildings or the small tiny houses the these things or wooden logs even sometimes the uh, tiles has been used uh, big tiles has been used to create the uh, floor and these tiles has been placed on the wooden joist or the steel beams even in case uh, you might have seen in the case of the uh, road uh, road over bridge or the railway over bridge or the foot bridges in the railway station the big concrete uh blocks uh, blocks or rather slabs has been used sometimes the steel blocks also has been used uh, steel plates has been also used to create this uh, these floors so that we can place or walk uh, on these particular floors the next is the beams beams and slabs beams and slab form a horizontal member in a building for a single story building the top slab forms a roof in case of multi story building the beam transfer the load coming from the floor above the uh, floor above slab above the slab which is in turn transferred to the columns the beams and slabs are constructed by reinforced cement concrete uh, actually sometimes in the steel structure they are of uh, the slab is of particularly uh, the rcc but uh, beams might be of the wooden material or the in case of steel structure it is of steel members even the slab i have to as i told you earlier is of uh, can be of so much different materials now the columns the columns are vertical member constructed above the ground level columns can be of two types that is structural column and architectural column the structural column takes the load coming from the slab above and transfer safely to the foundation while architectural columns are constructed to improve the building's aesthetics so here you can see the beams and columns so these are the columns and here you can see the beams these members are beams and this is slab and this is the foundation so this is the basically the framed structure now the lintel so lintel are constructed above the wall openings like doors windows etc these structure these structure support the weight of the wall coming over the opening so here you can see this is the lintel and this is supporting the this weight of the this wall coming on the opening normally lintels are constructed by rcc uh, basically uh, even though there are different materials uh, you might have seen the old buildings which in which the uh, the floor or the tiles has been placed over here and even sometimes wood is there or the uh, even sometimes bricks arches uh, arches or the uh, jack type uh, that uh, lintel of bricks has been used and the stairs so stairs is a series of steps 
connected different floors in a building structure it is mean of the vertical movement in the building it also helps to improve the appearance of the building and the parapet parapet are extended short walls around the opening like terrace or a galleries in the opening as you can see over here it acts as a safety wall for the people it also improves the appearance of the structure and the roof so roof forms the topmost component of a building it encloses the space from top roof can be either flat or slope based on the location and weather conditions as you can see we are preferring the uh, flat roofs and uh, nowadays but uh, uh, if you see the climates the in kokan region or in heavy rainfall region still they are they used to prefer the slope roofs to uh, wipe out that water uh, which is there from the rain pot and last is the door and windows a window is the opening in the wall door uh, door roof or vehicle that allows the passage of light sound and air and a door is a mean of access to the building it also helps to connect different spaces with each other so this is for today's lecture thank you thank you very much